Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Eicher here, bringing a 9.2 lesson uh, part one to you. This is about arithmetic or arithmetic. I've heard both. It's spelled arithmetic, but I like to say arithmetic. Arithmetic sequences. Uh, this is part one of maybe, I think maybe four um, parts to this lesson. So I hope you're enjoying having multiple parts. So you could do a part, do an assessment, take a break, and then come back. Uh, but if this were in the classroom, we would do all four of these parts in 80 minutes. So hopefully these videos that we make will uh, be less than 20 minutes per video. That would be nice. And uh, hopefully all the technology works well so that, so that uh, you can see my screen and stuff like that. Thanks to Zoom, who's sponsoring this video. <laughs> And thanks to YouTube, who's sponsoring this video. Uh, it's really cool, the technology we have, but we better get started. So without further ado, uh, if you would print your 9.2 notes, we're going to be the, doing the first, like the top half uh, of those notes. And then uh, after that, you can do the assessment like you've gotten used to so far in this distance learning that we're in. I hope that you're doing well in your family, uh, but let's get started. So sharing my screen, I want to share this one. All right, so we got going on arithmetic sequences and series. We have, I think that'll do. Um, so this is a formula that we talked about in the last video, that formula right there, a sub n, the uh, any nth term is the first term plus n minus one differences to get to that term. Um, now this says memorize, but really you don't need to memorize it since the quiz test, whatever the assessment's called, will be open notes. Uh, but it is helpful for you to know the basic gist of this formula. Um, some students like to write it as uh, a sub n equals a sub one plus d times n minus one. Uh, you can for sure do that. I think some students like to write it that way because uh, it puts the D and it looks like a distributive property because uh, sometimes students will uh, mess up when it comes to these parentheses, but the official formula is this one right here. Uh, and N is any positive integer. It has to be a positive integer because it's the position that it's on. So like you're at the first, the second, the third, you don't have any uh, decimals for n. So if you get a fractional n, something went wrong. Uh, and also you don't have negatives uh, for n. Uh, okay, so let's check out this first example. We have find the 12th term. So 12th term, that would be n. n is 12. Of the arithmetic sequence, we're told arithmetic, and it's a sequence. So we're going to be using the formula that we just talked about right up here. Uh, and you have this first term is, guess what, the first term. Mm, you got it, a sub 1. Uh, and really in that formula, maybe I'll just rewrite it here, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Uh, we have, uh, we're looking for a sub 12. That's the 12th term. We know a sub 1. We know n. Uh, all we need to know now is d, this d right here. So d is the common difference, uh, what you add or subtract to get to the next term. So the common difference you can see here is you're adding 6. It looks like every time. So d equals 6. a sub 1 is negative 4. Uh, n is 12. And we're looking for the 12th term, a sub 12. So notice this 12 gives you kind of two things. It gives you the a sub 12 is what you're looking for, and it gives you n, the number of terms. So plugging this information in, we want a sub 12. That would be the first term plus 12 minus 1 times d. And d is 6. You're adding 6 every time. Um, that would be negative 4 plus 11 times 6. Now that's 66. So I think that would be 62 negative four plus 66. So our 12th term is 62. 
wealth term is, sorry, uh, that would be a positive 62. Thank you. I know you are thinking, you are wondering. So that's a positive 62. Um, just to verify like what this has actually done, if I can share my screen, ooh, Sevy, 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 Sevy. So let me share a different screen just to show you what's going on. So uh, hopefully you see my calculator right now if everything is <clears throat> working well. So we started at negative four and then we added six and that gave us two. And we wanna know the 12th term. So if negative four is the first, two is the second, eight's the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, aha, the 12th term is positive 62. So um, that's really all that formula is doing for us is figuring out what that 12th term is, which is 62. Uh, how many times did I have to hit enter? I hit enter 11 times. The 12 minus one in the formula tells you how many uh, you know, times to hit enter to get to the 12th term. Um, okay, so hopefully this is taking you back to my iPad screen. So the answer there was 62. Let's check out this one. If you'd like to pause the video, you can pause right now and try it out yourself. All right, so we're looking for the 20th term. Uh, the 20th term, that gives us n would be 20. We're looking for the 20th term, question mark. And the first term is a sub one. That's our first term, which is 15. And then we just need the common difference d. So it looks like we're going down. So it's gonna be negative, adding a negative. And it looks like we're going down by uh, eight. We're adding negative eight each time. So our common difference D is negative eight. So uh, right now the formula, here's the very uh, general formula. Alrighty then. Uh, A sub 20 is what we're looking for. The first term is 15. How many common differences D of negative eight do we have to add to get there? We would be adding 20 minus one, which is 19 of them. So we have 15 plus 19 times negative eight. And then uh, <clears throat> calculator. Using my calculator, 15 plus 19 times negative eight is negative 137. So the 20th term, the 20th term is negative 137. There we go. <clears throat> uh, if we wanted to verify, this is always dangerous because I hope you're seeing my screen. If we wanted to verify, we would go over yonder. Let me clear these other guys out. We started at 15. 15. And then we're adding negative eight every time. And we'd like to know what the 20th term is. So the 20th term, we would uh, go to 20. So if it was 15, seven, the third term is the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Negative 137, hey, that's what we figured it out. Uh, negative 137 is the 20th term. Um, all right, so I think that's good for that. Let's go back to this notes page. Here we go. Uh, and then number three, find the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. So here we don't really know a specific value of n. So anytime you're told that to find the nth term, the nth term, uh, you're not gonna have one single number, you're gonna have basically an explicit function, explicit formula for how you could find any nth term. So your, excuse me, so your answer should have an n in it, not just a number like 62, but an n. So let's check out, uh, we have uh, n is just n, no particular number. 
a sub n is what we're looking for. a sub n is going to just be a sub n. a sub 1 is the first term, 12. And then our common difference d is what we're adding to get to the next term. So uh, if you want a formula, I mean, if, if you really want a formula to figure out d, basically you do 12 plus something, and I got 3. So what is the something? The something would be subtract 12 from both sides. The something would be negative 9. Uh, and this works uh, for all of them. If you were at 3, the second term right here, and you add some d, you got to negative 6. So what is d? If you subtract 3 from both sides, you would get negative 9. It should be a constant. An arithmetic sequence has that constant common difference between every term. So d is negative 9. So to find the nth term, we would have a sub n equals the first term, 12, plus n minus 1. Notice we're not putting anything in for n because we want it to be general for any n, just the, the nth term. And then uh, d is negative 9. Um, simplifying a little bit. I mean, this is basically the answer, but we just need to simplify it. Um, so simplifying this, the nth term, a sub n, is 12 plus. We're going to distribute, but we'll use a red marker, distribute this negative 9 to both of those terms. So that would be negative 9n plus 9. Um, adding like terms, a sub n equals 12 plus 9 is 21 minus 9n. Uh, and that's our answer. Um, that's the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. So what this allows you to do is if you wanted the hundredth term, you just plug 100 in for that n right there. And that would give you uh, whatever that is, 21 minus 900 would be the 100th term. Uh, but that's it. That's how you find the nth term. Uh, I have another example here. If you'd like to pause the video and see if you're following along, I would encourage you to do that. At least try to do a step or two, see what you can do. Um, this one's a little trickier, though. Um, so in this example, we have a sub 6 is 12. So a sub 6 is 12. We don't know. This is what makes it a little tricky. We don't know a sub 1. Not really sure. And then we have a common difference of 8. Now, the a sub 6 tells us that when n is 6, we get 12 as the answer. So before we actually answer the question, let's see if we could figure out what is that first term. Now, you could probably subtract. You could go backwards and figure out if the 6th term is 12. Let me jump to my calculator here. If the 6th term is 12, let's see. New share. There we go. I hope you see that. If the sixth term is 12, that's the sixth term. And we're adding 8 to get to the next term. That means we subtract 8 to go backwards. I don't know which way is frontwards and backwards on the screen. So we subtract 8. That would be our fifth term, our fourth term, our third term, our second term, and our first term. So our first term is negative 28. So if we went backwards, if we started at negative 28, if that's our first term, and the common difference is adding 8 every time, that's our second, third, fourth, fifth, our sixth is 12, and that's what was given in the problem. So uh, you can logically, if you have a calculator, if it's not a huge number to work with, you could just use your calculator and kind of work backwards and like trial and error kind of thing. Uh, but there is a way that you can do this without having to use a calculator and do trial and error. I'll jump back over here. Um, so what you could do is you could say, well, I know a sub 6. And that's the first term plus n minus 1 times the difference. That's that formula we've been talking about all lesson. So a sub 6 is 12. The first term, uh, we don't really know. So maybe I should just call that a sub 1, I'll probably be smart, plus uh, n is 6 minus 1. Why is n 6? That's because we're on the sixth term. So n is 6. 
and then the common difference is eight. So solving this, we'd get 12 equals a sub one plus five times eight. And that's 40, so when we subtract, we would get negative 28. And that's what I discovered just using my calculator, that the first term is negative 28. Um, now this question, we're asked to find the nth term. So the nth term would be a sub n equals the first term plus n minus one times d. Uh, a sub n is just gonna be left as a sub n because we want the nth term. Uh, a sub one we found as negative 28. And n is just n because we want the nth term. And d is eight. So uh, all we have to do now is simplify this, and that's our answer. So we have a sub n equals negative 28 plus distribute, we use that red one again, that's pretty nice, distribute that eight. So that would be eight n minus eight. Um, subtract, let's see, negative 28 minus eight is negative 36 plus eight n. And that would be our answer. So this was a kind of two part question, figuring out what the first term is and then going from there. And there's probably other approaches that you could use too. It'd be interesting you message me if you have another approach, I'd love to hear it. Uh, we'll end this part of the lesson with this word problem, which says the table below show typical costs for a construction company to rent a crane for one, two, three or four months. Assuming the arithmetic sequence continues, how much would it cost to rent the crane for 12 months? So if you rent it for one month, it's 75,000. If you rent it for two months, it's 90,000. If you rent it for three, it's 105, et cetera. Um, so you're asked about uh, 12 months. So that's important information. How much would it cost for 12 months? Uh, and then in this table, you're given the first price, the first cost as 75,000. Uh, and then you could find the common difference. It looks like it's changing by 15,000 each time. So we would say uh, the cost for 12 months, that would be a sub 12 is what we're looking for. Our first term, a sub one is 75,000 plus uh, n, n is 12 from this 12 right here, n equals 12, 12 minus one. And then the common difference is 15,000. Uh, I'm just gonna put all that in my calculator and go from there. So if I go over here, I had 75,000 plus uh, 12 minus one's 11. I think I can handle that without making a mistake. Times 15,000. Enter, and that's 240, $240,000 it would cost. Uh, now you could very well just go kind of like, you're starting at 75,000. If you add 15,000 each time, uh, so the second month is 90,000, that's what the table says. And then the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th is 240,000. Um, now that way works as well. I would like you to be familiar with the formula and know how to show work and use the formula. Uh, especially if it's something like how much would it cost if you rented it for five years? It might take a while to hit 60 times, 12 times five, 12 months times five years is 60. To hit 60 times, that would be kind of inconvenient. Um, but that is an approach that you could take just to check your answer. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, hope that that was, we'll go like this, hope that that was helpful for you. And the next video will be probably shorter and it'll be about arithmetic means. Um, and then after that, we'll talk about arithmetic uh, series and then we'll talk about sigma notation. So four parts probably, four parts. Um, to this lesson. Thanks for watching and have a great day.